say the running game all always. You know, how important is it, and what do you have to do to to stop a Derrick Henry kind of similar back that you open the SEC conference season with? It, um, it it's quite a, it's it's our certainly our biggest task um, since the LSU game in terms of a, a great player at running back um, because nobody's really quite had the answer in terms of getting him stopped yet, and and part of it is just because they're they're you know they're just so persistent. And, and pounding him, and, and that's one of the challenges, and that's one of the things that that, that I have a lot of respect for their offense is that they're just going to they're just going to keep asking the same question, and um, and you know, and, and see if you're willing to be where you're supposed to be with the right frame of mind for for 60 minutes, and um, and if you can hang on for 15 or, or 25 or 35, it, it, sooner or later they just keep pounding at you, then it cracks, and then the big plays occur. So it um, it is a challenge of um, I would say mental discipline. And mental toughness as much as it is physical toughness. How yeah. unique is their game plan, or can you take stuff away from other games you've played this season and trying to prepare for him? Uh, you know, I mean, there's a little bit of, there, there's always a little bit of same as, you know, but uh, but they, they do some things that are unique, um, and certainly, you know, the people, the personnel makes it unique as well. So every, every week has its own little challenge, um, but I think, you know, I think at the same time, I think our guys have confidence in, in what we've been able to accomplish, and, and, uh, and we're, we're looking forward to, to playing them. Henry seems like he's getting almost stronger as the season progresses. Why? Why is he so good? Well, I just I just think they're improving as a football team, which um, which all good teams you know aspire to do as the year goes on. I think they've um, they've come to terms with their identity on offense. You know, you know, even early in the year, just getting the quarterback situation uh, straightened out and just finding out who they are. Some of their young wideouts right. have developed and made plays, which have opened things up for the running game. So they're just getting better. You know, but but we think we're getting better too. So um, I, I would agree with you that he's that he certainly uh, has. His production has gone up as years gone on, but I think uh, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Kind of touching on that about the young receivers, how much is the added production of Ridley kind of help open things up for for Henry as well? It, it has. Well, they've they've they found they found the playmaker in Ridley. You know, a guy that that um, that they can get the ball to in, in a bunch of different ways, and they do a good job like they did last year with Cooper of moving him different parts of the field. So he's hard got to get a beat on in terms of where he is. Um, you know, move him around, motion him, run routes, recrosses the field, things like that, so we can run away from coverage. Um, and you know, and his 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 playmaking ability and his maturity for for a young guy is is is, is pretty uh, unusual. Yeah, no Missouri. touchdowns, no touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Uh, just how much of a point of emphasis has that been for y'all? Well, I think as the year has gone on, you know, and and it, and you know, after you, you kind of after a while, you are who you are. And um, I think that is something now that our guys take a lot of pride in. Um, you know, it's something we, we brought up in the locker room at halftime in Missouri when it was a one-point game. And we, you know, that we know if we get to the fourth quarter, we feel really good about our um, our chances in that in that time frame because we, we know that we can close. So that um, I think I think you know our, our play in the fourth quarter is similar to our play in the red zone. I think that's just that's kind of comes stems from our program. It stems from our guys being taught um, every day of the year on how to finish. You know, so I think we I think we're good at finishing drives. We're good at our numbers offensively, defensing in the red zone, and obviously I think we're good at finishing games. So, so you know, and especially with an offense with a guy like Dak, you know, you're never out of a game. You know, you always have a chance. And but also, you know, we know that we got the lead going in the fourth quarter. We feel good about our chances. At Missouri, you continue with the three safety set there. What, what does that bring to the defensive scheme? Well, it's not as it's not as much as because it's three safeties. It's really just about our personnel and just getting our best guys on the field. You know, so we've been using Jamal as a nickel. Really, some over the last month we've been playing more spread type teams. So the fact that he plays safety means that we have three safeties on the field. But um, but the length that he provides, uh, certainly the speed he provides and the toughness that he provides um, out there, at, you know, at the point of attack, you know, where a lot of people are, you know, the spread offense we play the last few weeks and they're trying to throw bubble screens and things out there like that. Um, and then his length, you know, he can just really cover up the wide receivers out there. Um, I think that's really helped our defense. And then obviously just getting more speed on the field and just, you know, when you're when you're a fast defense, things stay open for a short amount of time. Dan said he thought Chris Jones played his best game against Missouri. Do you, would you agree with that? Or kind of what was the turning point for him in that? I don't think there's any doubt. Um, but I still – I look at the turning point back to the Troy game. You know, I, I just think – I think Chris, you know, I think Chris was – you know, I, I saw him – Get better in August, you know, than he was during spring practice, and we've been talking about the, his development of really in September of just being a. He had just proved he could be a down for down serviceable guy in the SEC because no matter all the fanfare and some of the flash plays he'd made in the past, he'd never done that. And now, you know, he kind of did that in September, and then October, all of a sudden, you started seeing now some of the flashes of the dominant plays. And now the challenge was, okay, can you be a big time guy that down after down the offense has to worry about uh, where you are. 
I think that's what's really sparkled the last couple of weeks with this play. Now, in a setting like this, you know, can you do that um, against a challenge like Alabama's offensive line? And um, and we look forward to seeing that Saturday night. How have you seen your kids, obviously, on the defensive side of the ball, closer to, to key shows are probably than the offensive guys. How have you seen your guys bounce back in practice or handle that this week? You know, I don't know. I don't know that you bounce back. Um, I, don't, I don't know that they have. What I do know is that football – for, for the team and like it does for all of us, it, it, it provides a, a getaway. It provides a distraction. Um, it gives us, you know, a couple hours on the field of practice every day where we can just run around and just, and just kind of forget. Um, and, um, and then, it, and then it, it provides family. And that's, that's so overused, but I think if you were inside the program, you really understand what that's all about. And, um, and just the ability for guys just to sit down and just talk. Um, you know, we're supposed to, you know, we talk every day about toughness and being tough and not showing weakness and things like that. And something like this, you know, it's going to knock you back. And and, um, and you can't be afraid to be vulnerable. And you can't be afraid to, to be vulnerable around, um, you know, the guys that you that you work with every day. So um, I think those things have, have, have helped our guys the last few days. A lot of focus, obviously, on Derrick Henry and things. But what, what type of threat does Zach Coker in the Alabama passing game provide? To you? It's all about the explosive play. You know, that's where uh, – you know the the run the you know on normal downs everything they have just about comes off some sort of run action. You know they're not going to drop back and throw it. It's going to be uh, it's going to be pound you, pound you, and then here comes somebody on a crossing route. It's going to be pound you, pound you. Here comes somebody on a double move down the field, um, and it's and and they present the type of deal where you can play them really well except for five or six plays, and those five or six plays can be huge chunk plays and huge touchdowns. Now that's the strength of theirs. We feel like that's the strength of ours. Of not allowing that to happen, so that to me is going to be, I think, very telling in terms of who comes out on top on Saturday. But they, they use a lot of formations. How do they try to, you know, confuse the same things they did with different formations? Yeah, well, they're they're very multiple, um, and they'll they'll line everyone up in every different direction. Um, wide receivers will line up at running back, running backs will line up at wide receiver, tight ends will line up at running back and wide receiver. So um, you have to sort of understand the concept rules of your defense um, and not get caught up in all the window dressing that they do. Um, and, and, and really see what it is that they're trying to accomplish in the running game and the throwing game, because then, then you start to see the trends start to emerge. What's it about Henry, though, his running style that makes him unique? Well, because he's just such a unique to, to, – to be as big as he is, um, and then when he gets his pads squared up to the line of scrimmage, um, I mean, he's an excellent downhill runner, and he just square, he gets squared up. And even if you can get him on the ground, he's always falling forward, you know, and that and that's, that's that residual effect of the – the plays in the first quarter, there might be three-yard gains, and then there are five-yard gains in the second quarter, and then there are, there are seven and eight-yard gains in the fourth, and then in the, in the third, and then the fourth, they turn into 20-plus gains. So um, it's just that it's just that ability of just going forward and going forward and, 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 and moving the pile forward. How much is it, as you kind of talked about, is just the physical wear that he gets on people? What Where does the mental aspect of tackling him come in there where he's going to fall forward and he's going to maybe break a 10-yard gain in there, a 20-yard gain in there? Well, and that's a part of it. And what they do a great job of, is they, schematically, is they do a great job of trying to find, um, let's just say, your, your least willing tacklers. You know, and they've done a good job of everybody they've played against this year. They're going to, you know, one thing Alabama's going to do is they're going to make all 11 of your guys tackle. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you got one guy that, that likes doing a lot of things except for tackling. They're, they, they do a great job of schematically making sure that he's going to have to tackle, especially a guy that's 240 pounds. So, so um, your run defense is going to be as sturdy as your least tough guy. It's not going to have to do with you know maybe your your, your big defensive tackle or your, your middle linebacker. It may have to do with your your cornerback. It may have to do. With, it's just they're going to make all 11 tackle, and um, so all 11 are going to be um, in the mood to tackle. And I think and again I, I think we, that's something that we feel like we've done a good job of this year. Is it unique to, to scheme to try to have him run towards people who aren't you know willing to tackle or aren't as great as tackling? Well, if you think about it, just in the era of spread football, you know, the more wideouts you put on the field, the more you separate the defense. You know, so there's a lot of teams, a lot of weeks where you know some of the defensive backs they're never around. You know, mm -hmm. linemen and runners and things like that. The more you pile everybody in close, you're bringing all those guys that you know were out there 20 yards away. And now they're all you know we all smell each other in here now, and then they'll you know they'll block down and you know kick out and run outside running plays, you know, and, and they'll get everybody blocked up. You know, you always hear about eight-man box. Mm -hmm. um, well, what they do is they say, okay, well, who's your eighth guy? You know what I mean? Uh, well, it's, it's maybe it's our safety. Okay, well, then we're going to crack him. Who's your eighth guy? Oh, now it's the corner. Fine, we'll let him tackle every play and see how he feels about that. You know what I mean? So that, that's those are the things that, you know, to me, you know, where you say it, it just it goes beyond X's and O's because it's not about just diverting personnel to the, to the problem. It's just who the personnel is and, and how they can handle it.